obviously track is very dear to my heart. I started working in 1927 setting hurdles. That was my freshman year, and I couldn't compete, so I set hurdles that year. I think Junior League has, uh, has been misconceived over the years. And fortunately, it's a group that has adapted to the changing role of women in America. Hello, and welcome to Take One. I'm Morgan Halgren. Quite unintentionally, tonight's edition of Take One has a theme. I say unintentionally because each story was chosen purely on the basis of its own merits. And yet when the decision had been made, we discovered that we had accidentally created a show that revolves around the idea of people helping people. Our first installment on that theme is a profile of the extraordinary Jim Duncan, a man who devoted his life to the idea that all human beings are unique and deserving of support and encouragement. This feature originally aired in the spring of 1989 as part of Iowa Public Television's coverage of the 80th annual Drake Relays. Jim Duncan had passed away just weeks prior to that, and hence this piece also served as a memorial to Mr. Duncan's life. With the approach of the 1990 Drake Relays, we thought it would be fitting to show it again. Obviously, track is very dear to my heart. I started working in 1927 setting hurdles. That was my freshman year, and I couldn't compete, so I set hurdles that year. And uh, that, that was the beginning of it. And then uh, uh, I competed in the relays. Later, I coached teams and brought them into the relays. And then I came back to Des Moines in 1950. And uh, I worked uh, on the PA crew in 50, and then I started announcing morning events in 51. As a student at Drake University, Jim Duncan was a writer, an actor, and a Missouri Valley 440-yard track champion. His academic prowess earned him the cherished Phi Beta Kappa Key, quite an accomplishment when you consider that Jim didn't even begin his formal education until the age of 10. Yet he graduated from high school at age 14. Following graduation from Drake, Jim began a career in education initially at Minburn, Iowa, where he served as administrator, teacher, and coach and where his teams had to face the likes of Niall Kinnick in football and Bob Feller in baseball. Later, Jim Duncan returned to Drake, where he began a 31-year reign as one of the nation's foremost broadcast media educators, and in 1966 was selected as one of the nation's 33 super professors by Esquire magazine. What he implanted in me was uh, to try and keep learning. You know, try and look at the other point of view gather the material, let's say, that's there, and then try and do some research. And uh, he always said to respect other people's opinion and, and other people's uh, discipline, and uh, then find out something new and, uh, and go after it. And uh, the biggest thing is that I'm always afraid uh, that I might do something that uh, he wouldn't have liked. And uh, you don't want to do that with a man who uh, who's really put um, a lot of himself in all of his students. And uh, you don't want to let that guy down. The year is 1964. The female athlete always held a special place in the heart of Jim Duncan. Girls high school basketball fans in the state of Iowa grew accustomed to his recognizable style of introducing each year's Hall of Fame awards at the state basketball tournament. E. Wayne Cooley is the executive secretary of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union a governing body whose innovative programs have helped to elevate high school girls' athletics into the national spotlight. Now, to the Iowa girl, he was the one who did as much as anybody to give the Iowa girl national prestige and national prominence. He was a great friend of the Iowa girl, and much of our credit goes to Jim Duncan. She's a basketball walk-on there, but immediately she starts a spectacular career. She leads her team to a 21-2 season that misses a national tournament by a two points. And Considering his fondness for women's athletics, it comes as no surprise that Jim would have some personal favorites from the Drake Relays. The, the late Peg Neppel, of course, was a big thrill when uh, we saw her break the world's record at, uh, at Drake in the 5,000. And uh, I'll never have any deeper thoughts for any athlete than I did for Debbie Esser who came through all sorts of problems, broken collarbones, uh, gallstone operations, uh, uh, tremendous difficulty physically, and all she did was win four national championships. 
Perhaps one of the honors Jim cherished most occurred last year when the track at Drake Stadium was renamed the Jim Duncan Track. They took him down there in the little cart and he stood down there and they opened this thing and I don't think there was a dry eye in the stadium. It was a very moving moment and it was a tribute to a mighty, mighty fine sports figure. Being a legend is, is more than what you do, it's what you are. And uh, Jim was, was not only an outstanding announcer when it came to the, to the Drake Relays, but Jim was, was a warm, personable, friendly, extremely knowledgeable individual that could talk to you about just about anything and, and any questions that you might have in the area of track and field or certainly any other area of athletics. Uh, if you didn't have the answer, Jim Duncan would have it for you. He's a legend because of an unusual ability and a marvelous, remarkable mind. I'll miss Jim like uh, you miss a brother that you loved. It is Prairie View! They've got the baton. Underway, and breaking world is Latini. Latini and Ingram. Not surprisingly, we weren't the only ones who chose to honor the memory of Jim Duncan. His picture will adorn this year's Relays tickets. In addition, the annual Lady Bulldog Invitational Track Meet, a kind of tune-up meet held in advance of the Relays, has been renamed the Jim Duncan Invitational. And now we'd like to take a moment to honor a viewer who took the time to share some tangential thoughts that were brought to mind by our recent story on the Tamboritzen Band from Pittsburgh's Duquesne University that visited Buena Vista College. To refresh your memory, Tamboritzen is the name given to a family of stringed instruments indigenous to the folk cultures of southeastern Europe. Through dances, rituals, songs, costumes, and folklore, the Duquesne...